Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech, and quite a few people have asked me recently to cover all of the accessibility features within iOS 14. Now, iOS 14 will be released to the public in late September or maybe October this year based on delays, or maybe it's out by the time you're watching this video. But either way, those that have difficulty as far as visual impairments or maybe hearing impairments, quite a few people have actually asked me to do some sort of video covering the accessibility features of iOS 14. And so whether or not you have an impairment or not, these features can be helpful to you either way, if you want to navigate your device a little bit differently. And so let me first go over the new voiceover accessibility options. So in order to access those, what we'll do is we'll go to settings under settings, scroll down and go to accessibility and everything we'll talk about is under accessibility. Now, the first thing is voiceover recognition. Now you can see that we have voiceover here at the top. If I tap on voiceover, we now have voiceover recognition about halfway down. And so voiceover recognition gives us four new options. And the first one is image descriptions. If we have image descriptions turned on, it will actually explain what's in the image based off of AI that the device recognizes. It also has screen recognition. So it says that your iPhone will automatically make apps more accessible by recognizing items on the screen. We also have text recognition, so it recognizes texts and will speak that back or text and speak it back. And then we can select the feedback style that we want, such as play a sound, speak or do nothing. And so if I go back and I turn this on, it will start speaking everything on the display. So let me turn it on. You also have practice, but it also gives you visual cues as to what you're selecting. So whether or not you're hearing impaired or visually impaired, you can use this either way to, be to better help select what you want. So I'm going to go home. We'll slide up. I wait for it to jiggle and give me haptic feedback and then we'll be on the home screen. Now, if I turn the volume up, you'll hear that it's actually describing everything I'm doing. So I'm going to go through each one of these things to show you exactly how it works to scroll with voice recognition turned on or voiceover turned on. You use three fingers. So it's a little bit hard to navigate. You double tap on an object to open it or tap on it to understand what it is. So let me turn up the volume so you can hear, and then we'll go through some of the new features. Dog Safari double tap to open Safari address solidedge.com. Secure and validated connection. Double tap to show controls. So it's explained to me what's on my website, what website I'm at, and whether or not the website is secure and how I can access controls. Now, what we'll do next is have it recognize what's in this image right here. So take a listen to this. iPhone 10s Max one year later. Image. A cell phone on a wooden surface. E. Year. So it understood that there's a cell phone on a wooden surface. I didn't tell it that that's not the name of the image or anything. It just understood that's what's there. We'll slide down or scroll down. And now that we've scrolled down, we have some text. So let's see if it can recognize the text. I've been using iPhone 10 S max for an entire year. I share my experience with the iPhone 10 S max over the past year and talk about its durability, performance, cameras, and more. Now that we've heard that it actually can understand images, understand text, let's go back home and see if it can understand what's on the screen. Double tap page two of three. Siri suggestions. Widget. Stack. Create new direct message. Swipe. Siri suggestions. App Store. Wednesday, July 29. Apple Arcade. Five through page two of eight. And it'll at page three of eight Apple Arcade this week on Apple Arcade. So if you're visually impaired, you can see how this can help you better navigate around an iPhone. So for those of you that actually are visually impaired, hopefully this helps out. You've got voiceover recognition that now recognizes images, texts, and screen recognition, as well as gives you audible and visual and also a haptic feedback as well. Now I've turned voiceover off so we can take a look at the next accessibility update and that has to do with audio or headphone accommodations. So again, under accessibility, if we scroll down to where we see audio slash visual under the hearing section, tap on that and then you'll see 
audio accommodations or headphone accommodations. Now, specifically you need Apple or beats headphones for this to work. So I've got my AirPods two here. You can use AirPods, AirPods pro beats headphones, but let's go ahead and use this one and then go into headphone accommodations. Now under accommodations, you'll see that we have the ability to customize the audio for supported Apple and beats headphones by adjusting the settings below or through custom audio setup. And the settings are things such as balanced tone, better settings for vocal range or brightness, and then you can adjust the amount it will be boosted. So slight, moderate, or strong, and then you can apply it with only the phone, only the media or both. So let's go ahead and go to custom audio setup. And here you can see, you can adjust speech for phone calls, hear more musical detail and dialogue in movies, and then audiogram, use an audiogram from health to customize your audio. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. And it says before getting started, look for a quiet environment and then connect your headphones to continue. So we'll cancel that for now. And if we want to adjust this, maybe we want to change the vocal range. So it has a little bit of a different sound. Maybe we want it moderate or strong, and then we can play a sample if we want to. So you can set this up however you'd like, whatever works best for your hearing ability. And if you're having difficulty hearing voc voice, for example, boost the vocal range within different movies or just in your surroundings. So we'll go ahead and turn that off and take a look at the next update. Now, the next new feature has to do with recognizing sounds or sound recognition. It's under the same heading under accessibility. You'll find it under hearing. And if you go to sound recognition and turn it on, what it will do is alert you when it hears sounds. So maybe you're hearing impaired and you want your iPhone to recognize when it hears a different sound and let you know it can now do that with iOS 14. So if we go into sounds, you'll see all of the different things things that it can recognize. So under alarms, we have fire, siren, and smoke. For animals, it will recognize a cat or dog. Under household, it will recognize appliances, a car horn, doorbell, door knock, water running. And then under people, it can recognize a baby crying or shouting. And it will recognize that and then let you know via notification. Now I actually have do not disturb turned on. So you won't see this if you just actually leave that on. But if you turn that off or look at our notifications here and I play the sound of a doorbell, so we'll play that. The phone will actually recognize it and it pops up a notification saying a sound has been recognized that may be a doorbell. And so it lets you know that it heard a sound. So it will let you know that visually on your phone. And if you have it turned on as far as your notifications, you'll see that pop up on your phone. So it's a really helpful way to let you know that there's something going on if you're having trouble hearing it. Now, the next function got a lot of attention when it was first discovered, and that's called back tap. Back tap allows you to tap the back of your phone to activate a function on your phone. And what you can do with it is set a double tap or triple tap to activate that feature. Now this feature works specifically with the iPhone eight, the eight plus the iPhone 10, the iPhone 10 S, the iPhone 10 S max, iPhone 11, iPhone 11 pro iPhone 11 pro max, and the 2020 iPhone SE, at least at the time of this video, whether or not they bring that to older phones by the time you're watching this is hard to say, but that is what is currently supported at the time of this video. Now, in order to take a look at these settings, what you want to do is go again into accessibility, go to physical and motor, and then tap on touch. Scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see back tap. Go ahead and tap on that. And if you turn it on, you'll have different options. So currently you'll see that I have flashlight on and flashlight off depending on the function. So if I flip my phone over, tap the back twice, it runs a function and turns on the flashlight. Tap it three times, it turns it back off. I created a shortcut to do that, but you can tap on this and select different system functions, anything from the app switcher to shaking the phone to accessibility or anything else you'd like to do that you can do within shortcuts. So you have the option to turn that on. If you don't want it, simply turn it back off and tap on none and it will turn off those features. So if you don't want back tap on, you can have it on or off, but it's nice to have it there as a little way to activate a function very quickly. Now, the final thing they've updated has to do with FaceTime. Now, unfortunately I can't really show this to you, so I'll describe it. But if you have a FaceTime group call, 
and you use sign language, it will actually make the person speaking using sign language more prominent, or it will make them closer to the screen so you can see them better. It works the exact same way as if you were in a conversation and the person speaking is enlarged within that window. It does the same thing now with sign language. So it actually recognizes that you're using sign language and makes that person more prominent. So it's a great feature to have. And Apple is always adding great accessibility functions, but this year, though, those are what they've added to iOS 14. Now, if you're using accessibility functions regularly to navigate your phone, I'd love to hear from you if there's any other videos you'd like to see or anything else you'd like to learn how to do. So let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.